Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining another episode of the Educational Leadership Podcast. We have a, another very special guest from Oklahoma. And before we introduce our guest, we want to give a shout out to our co-host, Corinne French. Hello. So excited to get started today. As usual, I cannot wait. Thanks for having me today, Gary. Yes, yes, exciting. And before we get in today's conversation, we do want to give a shout out to our sponsor, Ideal Impact. Ideal Impact is giving hundreds of millions of dollars away to public education in the form of a free gift, unrestricted funds. So if your district needs additional funding for any of your initiatives, reach out to Ideal Impact. Okay, today's guest, we have Superintendent McCauley from Bartlesville Public Schools in Oklahoma. Superintendent McCauley, thanks for joining us today. You bet. Thanks for having me. Yes, yes. Super excited. So everybody we meet with has different perspectives, different ideas, different things they're focused on. Before we get into that, we would like to hear a little bit about your background just so our listeners can can learn a little bit about you. Yeah, you bet. This is my uh, 32nd year uh, in public education. I started as a teacher and, and coached a little high school basketball, and uh, I've been in uh, administration since uh, 2001. Um, I, this is my, I've been in Bartlesville, Oklahoma. Uh, we're about 45 miles north of Tulsa, a town of about 37,000. We have about 6,000, oh, just over 6,000 students. Um, I've served there, like I said, since 2001. I was an assistant high school principal, high school principal, worked in the central office, and, and I'm finishing up my eighth year uh, as superintendent here in Bartlesville. Fantastic. Corinne, was there something you were going to ask? Uh, I know. I just want to hear the word Tulsa. It always makes me so happy. My first son was born in Tulsa, and I love Tulsa. And if I ever leave Texas, I think going back to <laughs> Tulsa and that area is where I will go. So who knows? I may, may be calling and asking, hire me for chief of staff at your district someday. I, I love that area. You bet. Come on up north of the Red River. It's a great place. <laughs> yeah, Corinne, Corinne's finishing up her doctorate. So, uh she she's she's very focused in in uh expanding her horizons in public ed so t tell tell us what you're passionate about superintendent mccauley well you bet um you know i'm, I'm i've always viewed myself as a, a servant leader i'm here to serve our kids and and students uh staff and community and i'm really uh passionate about uh, where i am in bartlesville this is a great place to it's a great place to serve and um, really just strive to make uh, the best we can to serve those all of those different groups and working with our community to uh, give our kids opportunities. You know, this is a, it's a, probably every superintendent in the history of time have talked about the, how interesting their job is, but, you know, coming out of the, you know, in Oklahoma, we had a teacher walkout in 2018 uh, and obviously with COVID uh, and dealing with uh, political and you know, the pandemic, the realities of that uh, coming out of that these last few years, I think has made things even more uh, challenging. I think with the way to spread information through social media, uh, even inaccurate information through social media, you know, if you start thinking about uh, that with school choice as well. Um, I know in, Oklahoma, in Oklahoma this past this year, we're in the first year, there's a um, there are tax credits available for families that choose uh, homeschooling. Uh, or private school options for the first time. And so, you know, school competition is a real thing. Um, and I think it's just so important to, you know, to keep the main thing, the main thing, uh, to making sure that we're, you know, you, there's, you have that trust that's built with your students, staff and community. Um, we've, we've been fortunate coming out of the pandemic. Uh, you know, our enrollment has grown uh, about 250 kids since before the pandemic. And I think some of that is just how we have, uh, handled that, you know, how we've really been here to serve and work through those impossible situations where you can't make, you can't make everybody happy anytime, but there's been some really tough situations that have come through, uh, come through that. And I think how we have done that uh, has helped us and then continue to provide opportunities. You know, we're in the, we're in a place where uh, we have uh, uh, expanded programs for kids. We want to make sure that we are doing the best that we can to prepare our kids uh, for the next step in their lives. We have a nationally recognized STEM program. Uh, we offer computer science from pre-kindergarten up to our uh, cybersecurity at Marblesville High School. Um, uh, we recognize as a distinguished district by Project Lead the Way. There's only 17 of those in the country. 
we've invested heavily in that science, technology, engineering, and math. Um, we've also, we added a, um, an, an agriculture program. We didn't offer an FFA program, which is kind of strange in Oklahoma that we didn't offer that, but we, you know, we started that five years ago and now we're, we now have a three teacher program. We have over 250 kids enrolled. We've been nationally recognized for emerging leaders. Um, we were in our second year of an aviation program as well. Um, and we're, that, that plan, that program continues uh, to grow. That's, that's up under our STEM uh, bubble. And then really just looking at opportunities for kids. You know, next year we're going to start a construction class at Martlesville High School. Uh, we have tech centers in Oklahoma that are regionally located where typically kids can go and spend two or three hours a day getting some career type uh, electives. But the reality is we can't only, uh, not all of our kids that want to get in, get in. And so we've looked at more options to provide those type of experiences for kids. Uh, we, we're starting a construction one class, which we've had over a hundred kids enroll in for next year. So anyway, I'm just passionate about listening to our community uh, and kids and what the need is, and then working with them to provide opportunities for them. Love it, man. So we, we covered a lot there. You have a lot going on, a lot of, <laughs> that's amazing. So um, one of the things, obviously that's, that's a talking point these days. You mentioned tax credits for, uh, you know, school choices and that sort of, so y'all are in the middle of that. <clears throat> and I know there's other states, right, that have considered that. What, what kind of, what kind of impact does that really have on the district? Has it really affected anything or? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. And I get that often because this is the first year that families in Oklahoma have been able to benefit from a tax credit. Um, th we have always been, um, there's been one for kids. If you have a, a kid that qualifies for special needs and they choose a private school, there's been a tax credit for them. It's called the Lindsay Nicole Henry Scholarship. Uh, but this is the first time that just any family, if they have a homeschool family or they're choosing to send their kids to private school, they qualify for that. And the way that, and we'll see over time how that has impacted our enrollment. Uh, we do locally, we have a, um, we've got a small Catholic school as pre-K through eighth grade. We also have another uh, private school here in town uh, that's up through, that's K through 12. And then as well as we have a kid, we have a private school for uh, kids on the autistic uh, spectrum, just right here in our little town of 37,000. But what we've seen is this year, um, um, in terms of when I look at the data of how many kids uh, how many families have chosen to leave Bartlesville Public Schools to attend uh, one of those local private school options? We had this year, we had about five kids um, do that. And then we've had about 33 that have gone from the private schools to the public school this year. So, interesting. Uh, which is interesting. So we'll see, you know, time will tell, but I think a big uh, piece of that has been, you know, the opportunities that we're providing. I should also mention, I think just with safety as well, safety obviously has become such a, you know, the world we live in, um, I've often shared that, you know, I, I, I pray for different things than I used to um, daily thinking about school and school safety. And we've gone from, um, uh, we have nine school campuses um, on here in Bartlesville. And so we've gone from having uh, two school resource officers, but since Uvalde, um, we have, um, uh, we now have 10. So we have a full-time school resource officer at every site. We've partnered with our city of Bartlesville to have Bartlesville police officers here. And I think that type of response uh, has given a great comfort to our, you know, to our staff, but to our families, uh, community, uh, just to know that we are putting our priorities where they need to be. So anyway, that's a long-winded, that's a long-winded answer, but we'll see, we'll kind of we'll see how that, that, that tax credit, uh, uh, what impact that does have on, on schools. Um, we've already, in Oklahoma, we've already had open transfer that's been here for years. And in terms of a kid that if you live in, you know, if I live in a neighboring town and I choose to come to Bartlesville, as long as you have, as long as you have space, you have to accept them. Um, and so we've had open transfer in Oklahoma for a while. Um, so we've already had that kind of school choice ability. So we'll see what this tax credit has long term, but short term, I think at least in, at least in our, in our, in our school, uh, in our community, I uh, think we're providing good, uh, good enough options that our families really haven't uh, ha really hasn't had any impact on us at all. Yeah. So five kids went to private school, but you had over 30 come from the private school to, to the public school. So uh, to Bartis Bartisville public schools. Um, interesting. So, because you, you know, in other States, that's such a hot topic and, and you, you know how, you know, 
that's why we're here. We're here to share the good word of what's what's really happening, not you know, sure. not scare scare tactics like other some some of the other media outlets, if you will. Um, so, so very interesting. So, uh, Corinne, anything I, you? Yeah, I mean, I think I'm in a, I was in a really small district. The district has around a thousand students, and started when I started on the board ten years ago. It had around six hundred students, and served on that board for around ten years. I have six kids that went to public school. But prior to that, I homeschooled. And I, I think it's a it's a really it's an interesting question because I think in some states and some places this could benefit and maybe not hurt the public schools. But I, I have a I have a concern that it's it's not quite what people think. And the entire time I homeschooled my kids, I never thought, gee, if I could have those tax dollars that are supposed to follow this my student, I would be a better homeschool mom. It, it's such a privilege and honor. And you're in a totally different space financially in many cases if you can homeschool your children um, and make that work. Now, I think with online learning and all the different platforms we have, a person could be working and still homeschooling their kids from, from the same space. But when I did it, I was just homeschooling my children and not working on top of that. And so I think it's just really a hard, it's a hard conversation. I think we have to have these conversations where like you shared your numbers and just be transparent with this is what it's doing. Because in some places, it might be a game changer for some families. But in general, I feel like they're going to be they're going to be um, people who use that to go to a private school that it's not really those people could afford that private school to begin with. And so that's my only caution is that we really need to make sure we have public strong public schools um, for ev for everyone in this country. And I think we want to make sure we stick with that. But I want to change the time. I want to change the conversation for just a second. You mentioned servant leadership, and we can always tell, I mean, all of our guests are so, they have such a humble servant leader. I mean, I think that's one of the things that Gary, over the last, this is one on our third year, we walk away from these podcasts and we're encouraged as leaders ourselves. And so we love that when we get here, just a little window into how you lead. And we can tell um, from what you just shared that you you really are a servant leader and you really are trying to make the best with what you have in your district and doing great things. I wonder if you have some advice for superintendents and administrators and principals who are strong servant leaders, but but this the last couple of years has been a little hard. Um, thinking of well-being of leaders, that's that's something I've been I'm really curious about now. Is, let's have this conversation. How are we staying mentally and socially and emotionally well as leaders? Because our students are still looking to us for that leadership. So we can have all the great programs and everything, but we want to make sure we're taking care of ourselves. Do you have some, some tips there or something you're doing with your staff or uh, something you've watched another district do regarding well-being and encouragement to stay a strong servant leader? Sure. I appreciate Yeah. Thank you for that question. Um, I'll share a couple things. One, uh, I run, uh, I think it helps. I run five, six days a week, um, which I think it's, does more of a benefit for me mentally than it does uh, physically just for my, my well-being. And so I've always talked to my staff about it's important to invest in yourself. And my first year as superintendent, um, I talked to them about, hey, if anybody here wants to, uh, you know, if you're interested in running a 5K, I'm going to give you some, I'll give you some money to go for that. You know, I've got $500, just email me, we'll do that. And so like, this was at our back to school rally. And so we had, uh, that money went quick. And so as I, as each year I think about what can I do more? And so we have a local race um, that is an 8K here in town. And so um, I worked with them and it's a, it's a, it's a mentoring um, a program for, for kids that they run. And so I really believe in the program. So I worked with them and said, Hey, you know, how big of a sponsor, what would I need to do to donate to, make it where you guys wouldn't lose any money, but I could get my staff to go participate in this. And they said, well, I tell you what, if you'll donate, you know, thousand dollars, that'll give 60 year staff members that will, that will, they can just pay for the shirt and they can do the rest. And I said, great. There's no way in the world I'll have 60 people want it sold. I'm in. So, uh, so we started a competition between our sites to do that. And we've had between 180 and 250 of our staff members uh, participate uh, in that every year. We have a site competition and it's really powerful um, on that fall Saturday when we all get together and we participate in that race. And there's a walk as well. Um, and this, at the same time, we started a, a mentoring ship program for our fifth graders. Uh, we've had about a hundred fifth graders 
participate in that race. We call it Bruins on the Run. Bruins is our, our mascot. And so we have teachers that have volunteered to run with kids after school two days a week um, after the school year starts. And it leads up to this 8K race. And these are kids that, you know, they're not already involved in Little League football or soccer. They're really not involved in much. And so our teachers are doing this for nothing. I mean, they volunteer. It just really humbles me that they do this. Um, so we had over 50 teacher mentors. We have 105th graders um, that go through the program. And then on that Saturday in October, they run that race. And so, you know, we'll have that day and I'll have over 200 employees. You know, we'll have over 105th graders uh, participate uh, in that. And it's a it's a wonderful event. It's probably one thing that I'll be most proud of in terms of just investing in yourself and and. and Think about our kids on the goal setting, you know, thinking about their lives. These are kids that may not even know what a, a race is, but to know that they have people that care about them, uh, that can set the goal setting, you know, the hard work, you know, they can do hard things. And so that's one thing um, that um, we just made, I, we just kind of made it up. And so it's been, it's been great. And what we found is our, our, our schools, they were really competitive. One of our elementary schools, they, I think they won't hire you unless you sign up for the race. It's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> so we do that. And then also I'll mention the other thing is just with my leadership team. I'm talking about all, all my team, principals, assistant principals, my executive directors. Um, we really, when we get together, we focus on um, leadership. We do book studies. Um, that's really talking about, um, you know, last year we did one on Carol Dweck's mindset and we do a lot of things with John Maxwell and have different people come in, but really where we are not necessarily talking about the day to day grind, but we talked about the, priorities and how they're taking care of themselves. And, and when we talk about their goals, it's some, um, obviously a lot of times around school, but a lot of times are around just taking care of themselves. So anyway, I don't want to ramble too long, but those are just a couple of things that we yeah. do. That was perfect. I, I, for our guests and listeners, people that listen, our regular listeners will know that we, we, we just ask questions. We don't ever send them and our guests will know we don't send you questions ahead of time. So I thank you for taking that. I had no idea that you would have such a beautiful and strong answer. I just want us to talk about that because I love our teachers so much. I think we, if we love them and we say we love them, we say we love our students and we care about public ed, then we have to, we also have to show ways to do that and, and not just talk about classroom instruction and classroom management and every meeting we have, we have to talk about other things. And so, gosh, I didn't intend to have such a beautiful answer. And I, Gary will know, I, I never want to, I always, I'm trying so hard not to cry on these podcasts and get emotional, but when you're talking about how, what you thought, how many would sign up and then how many did, and then how they're taking this on and you can't even get hired there unless you're going to do this walk or run. I mean, that's exactly the kind of thing that makes it so sweet. So uh, thank you for, for taking pretty, me. You bet. It's pretty amazing. We went from that number to, you know, now I think it's, uh, I think it's about $2,500 a year that we personally, my wife, my wife's a teacher. She runs that we personally, personally invest in. Uh, and we'll do, I'll continue to do that after I retire. I'm just pretty passionate about our staff making that, uh, making that uh, investment in themselves. It's beautiful that, you know, I will say out of the <clears throat> 70 plus interviews we've done, there hasn't, ha there hasn't been anyone that had, that has mentioned fitness, right? Focusing on fitness and oh, well. yeah. I, and it's so overlooked. I, I was actually listening to an interview the other day. Um, I won't say the name of the person that was doing the interview, but they were doing the interview and they were saying, if you had to choose between, um, mental strength or physical fitness, which one would you choose? Right. <laughs> and the answer ended up being, believe it or not, physical fitness, because if you get your, you know, your body, right, you get your health, right. It, it enables you to, to, to learn, you know, and, and think, and, and there's just so many, you know, things from, you know, health wise, mental health, or, you know, that, mm -hmm. that's, you hear about students struggling with, and, you know, that fitness element is you, you go to the doctor and what do they tell you if you're sick? Well, you need to exercise more. If you get cancer, what do they tell you to do? Well, you know, keep exercising. And it's it's such an important element that's that's overlooked. And um, so, wow, I, I think that's super impressive. I think I think you're onto something there. I mean, and then <laughs> and, and then yeah. the com camaraderie that's formed among the teachers and students through that uh, experience. Um, that, that is so cool. Thank you. Okay, well, we have one. I know we're running short on time. We we have one one question left. Uh, this is the most difficult question. Uh, if if you were to if you were to recommend someone else to come on the podcast that's doing something amazing in public education, maybe another superintendent, who who would you recommend share their story? Um, 
Well, that's a good question. Um, I'd say actually, I'm, I'm, uh, uh, Sean McDaniel is a superintendent for Oklahoma City Public Schools. And Sean, unfortunately, I just read, uh, he announced his uh, resignation uh, just this week. Uh, but he's been, he's in his sixth year uh, at Oklahoma City, which is an accomplishment in itself. I have to, it, you know, Oklahoma is a unique, you know, we basically have two urban, you know, Tulsa and Oklahoma City, and then there's the rest of us. Uh, but I think his. We had him scheduled for this afternoon, but after the okay. resignation, it got canceled. Yep. Okay. There you go. Well, Perfect. he's done some. Yeah, we can circle back because I mean, him get the shout outs from guests are always helpful. Also, so we'll mention that you gave a shout out to him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think he's I think he's done some amazing things for the kids there. I think he'd be hopefully hopefully he'll be at a point where he could talk about that soon. But he's somebody I'd recommend. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll we'll keep him on our radar. Any any other uh, guests that you could think of? Um, you know, another uh, Kurt Hartzler is at Tulsa Union. Um, and actually he's, he's, he's retiring at the end of the year. Um, but he's somebody that would be a good, uh, that would be good for you as well. I think yeah, we're, we just interviewed him. So we're, 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 we're on the, we're, we're talking to the right people. Okay. So. <laughs> this, is, this is such a fun experience, uh, for our, for our listeners. Uh, this is so sweet because, uh, usually there's, I mean, Texas is such a large state that there's usually somebody we don't know, like some superintendent we don't know, but this is so great that you are recommending people that we've had. I love yeah. that. We're well, great. Yeah, about, like. It's interesting. Uh, what about Stacy Butterfield at Jinx? No, no, Have you heard no. that one? Okay. Yeah. It's Stacy Butterfield. Uh, and she's been there. She's been there a while. She's been superintendent nine or 10 years. It's a it's a suburb of uh, Tulsa. Yeah, I would love that. Let's do it, Gary. We'll we'll reach out to her. I love that. Thank you. Sounds great. Well, appreciate you sharing that, Superintendent McCauley, and thank you for joining us today. We really enjoyed the interview, and thank you for sharing your perspective and the ideas and exciting things that are happening at your district. And Corinne, thank you for being an amazing co-host as usual. Woohoo! I okay. might just go run. I might just go run after work. I might be inspired. <laughs> Yeah, you should. You should. And, 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 and you know what? You'll probably feel 10 times better after you get done. And, you know, that's. I, yes, I it, might finally get my writing done. Th th yeah, things like that. That's it's so overlooked. Fitness is so overlooked. And, um, okay. So before we close out, we do want to give one final shout out to our sponsor, IDO Impact. IDO Impact's given hundreds of millions of dollars away to public education. So if your district has any initiatives, you know, teacher salaries, whatever they, whatever they are, reach out to Ideal Impact. And for those that have been tuning in, stay tuned for future episodes of the Educational Leadership Podcast.